All right, folks, good evening to you. Coach Michael Burt, I hope you're doing great. We are uh, also live streaming on Facebook tonight. So for all the people over on my Facebook page, I'm going to pull that up real quick. And uh, I'm actually going to share it over to a couple groups as well. Live webinar on the five levels of pre-drive. Okay. And the five ways to really explode your business. I'm going to share this. Boom, boom, boom. Right. I'm going to share it on a bunch of pages here. So, uh, hope you guys are doing great tonight. I'm excited to be with you. I'm going to keep this good and tight. Okay. So we get right down to business. I want to number one, thank you for joining me. My name is coach Michael Burt. If you're new to following me, I was a championship women's basketball coach for a decade of my life, really started coaching as early as 15 years old in junior pro basketball, fell in love with the psychology of inner engineering people to perform at a high level at 18, really under a mentorship of a guy named Dr. Uh, excuse me, Don Meyer, and then studied for eight years, Dr. Stephen Covey, the seven habits of highly effective people really began to understand uh, how to build what I'm going to call a competitive intelligence in people. And uh, competitive intelligence is an, is an edge, man. It's an angle. It's, a, it's an opportunity. And so I really fell in love with the whole person theory and started writing books at 25 years old, mainly because I was coaching and winning and people wanted to know how, how we were doing it, right? And that prompted me to write my first book. And now I'm on book number 17, uh, and that book is called Flip the Switch, which will be out in most likely October of this year. And I'm trucking away, folks. So just bear with me as I go deep on this concept, because Flip the Switch is about the activation of Prey Drive. P-R-E-Y-D-R-I-V-E. So tonight we're going to talk about Prey Drive in a different way. We're going to talk about it from a perspective of five levels of this prey drive. And then we're going to get into five ways. I think you can five times your business in 2022. And um, so when I sat down to did the curriculum for this, it really made me think, how do you five X something in a one year cycle? You're obviously many of you are familiar with the concept of 10 X, but how do you five X something? And, and what does prey drive have to do with this concept? So Thank you for being here tonight. My team, Chris Odenell, is here tonight. Chris at CoachBert.com can help you with anything that you need. Uh, January 28th, I am doing a full day at my lodge on this concept of Prey Drive called Flip the Switch. And we are selling tickets to that event. It's $4.97 to come spend a day with me. And I'm telling you, it could activate something inside of you folks that has been latent and dormant. And if it comes alive, there is no telling what could happen in your life. I could give you example after example of the prey drive in a person uh, coming alive and what they went and did. And it, it, some people gone from 8 million to 75 million. Some people have gone from, from not having no clarity about their future to having total clarity about their future. Some people gone from being a player in the industry to dominating their industry. <clears throat> Once this is activated inside of you. So what is prey drive? Uh, it's interesting because I posted in an insurance, you know, we have an insurance agency called four part financial and I posted an insurance group, something about prey driving. This guy got all worked up and he's like, man, anybody talks about pray, praying on people, right? Has no business here. Listen, we're not praying on people. Okay. Prey drive is about you. It's not about you praying on other people. It's about you having an instinct to see something with your eyes optically or in the mind, in the imagination and having the persistence and the intensity to pursue it. So ultimately what I'm trying to do is help you activate something inside of you to go reach your potential. Potential is an idea of kinetic energy that is stored until activated. So prey drive is an instinct to see it and go get it see a bigger future, see something you want, see something that you are moving toward. That is what prey drive is, okay? So it's not preying on other people. It's activating a deep instinct inside of you 
that when you don't feel like doing something, you do it. When you know you need to do something, you, you fight through your feelings to go take an action on something, right? And I had to implement mine today. I got up. I went to the gym at 5 a.m. I left the gym. I did my morning video. I had a piece on faith. Uh, I did my faith time. I did my time with the family. I did my business time. And then I got in my car at 730, man. And my prey drive wasn't activated. It's like, man, I don't want to, I don't feel like making phone calls. I know I need to make some phone calls, but I just don't feel like it. Okay. And so I'm going to teach you tonight what happens when you don't feel like it. How do you fight through those feelings? I actually believe there's something that would cause you to fight through those feelings. So what happens when this drive in you is alive and active is, man, you start putting off an energy to the marketplace that you're going, you're going to find a way to make it happen, right? Like, because this drive inside of you is activated. So think of the word motivate means to move. Inspire means to breathe life into. Activate means to initiate. It initiates something <clears throat> deep inside of you that causes you to want to take bigger action. Okay. So let's talk about that. Over the last 15 years, you know, my special skill set is really packaging content, codifying that content, and then hopefully delivering that content to you in a way that helps you move toward your goals and your targets. Now, never underestimate the need to reactivate this prey drive every single day. You're never going to get to five times, folks, if you can't get to one time. Right. I see people say, I want to go five times. I want to go 10 times, man. And you don't have the daily discipline to get up and just do it every day. Do the monotonous every day to fight through your feelings every day. You just don't have the discipline, which is a derivative of the word disciple, which means to give yourself to a person or cause you believe it. You just don't have the discipline to work the muscle. And when you don't have the discipline to work the muscle, the prey drive can be activated like in flickers, like you show signs of it. You, you look good for one time. You show up one day. You make a few calls. But, man, you just don't have the, the down and dirty to do it every day. And all the greats have put in their time, man. They put the work in. So I've really become a specialist at packaging and delivering content in a way that hopefully activates that drive. It's really my life's mission to activate the prey drive in millions of people, people that it's gone dead, it's dormant, it's latent, it's undeveloped. People that know they have more potential, but they can't figure out how to do it. So let's talk about this. Because I want to teach you how to call. I want to use these words. Call up on this prey drive when you need it, when you need to amp up, when you need to go for the, the kill, when you need to, to get to the next frequency, when you need to see something through to its conclusion. I got to teach you how to call up on this. See, prey drive is not something you just walk around with all the time right? It actually sits, then it is activated by something. And then you come out of the gates and you're going, man, and you're pursuing something. And, and right. So there's three phases of prey drive. I want you to write this down. First, there has to be an activation to that prey drive. And you're pursuing Oops, something. Hit my own and button there. So the there's got to be, there's got to be a activation of that prey drive. Pursuing something. Okay. And, and right. So there's got to be, I had to get my thing up. Activation of that prey drive. Okay. Prey drive has to be activated by something. Number one. Number two, the prey drive must have a consistency or persistency to that prey drive. Okay. I can activate your drive tonight and then by tomorrow morning, it's gone. It's dead. It's late. It's undeveloped. Activation is easy. To me, nine out of 10 people can activate their prey drive by watching a video by listening to a podcast, by I was in downtown Nashville today, by looking at the skyline. We can be inspired, breathe life into, idea has a hold of us, tries to get us to a place we want to go. We can be activated by almost anything, but that's not where people fall off the wagon. People fall off the wagon in persistence and intensity of the prey drive. Activation, persistence, intensities. In the book, I call this the three phases of prey drive. If you're out there, I want you to type in tonight, where do you fall off the wagon? If you're on Facebook, if you're on Zoom, out of those three things, activation, persistence, and intensity, where do you struggle? Jeffrey, Chris, Lene, Wendy, where, where do you fall off the wagon? Is it in, see, there's consistency, persistency, 
Okay, just type in there, where do you, because once you recognize, you know, you're never going to five times the business if you have an inconsistency about you. Because the way you five times the business, William, is it's almost like the compounding of money. The way you build real wealth is the compounding interest, right? So if you just look at everybody right there, it's persistency and intensity, right? You study Warren, Warren Buffett, it's the snowball effect. It is persistence toward a goal of working the muscle until it becomes muscle memory, until you can fight through your feelings, until it doesn't matter how you feel. You can call upon this prey drive. So this morning I got in the car and I'm like, man, I ain't feel, I don't wanna make these phone calls. I don't want to make these phone calls. And then I called upon my prey drive. So, so how did I call upon it? When in doubt, take an action. I act my way into feeling. I don't feel my way into acting. I didn't feel like making the calls. So I, you know what I did? Picked up the phone and said, I'm doing it. Oh, Mel Robbins, five, four, three, two, one. Boom, made the call. Call had good energy. It was with Kelly Eisler of, uh, who runs our success schools for kids. Had a good call with Kelly. She had a lot of enthusiasm, which means God within. And I'm like, boom, let's do this. Then I got to Nashville. Then I got on a call with uh, with the Supreme Lending in Michigan. Try to activate their prey drive. Got out of that thing, went to my team, tried to activate my team's prey drive. Left that meeting, got on another meeting. See, what happened was I called upon it. What do I do? Man, when I'm in doubt, take an action. When I don't feel like doing something, I need to do it. How do I feel? How do I act my way into feeling versus feel my way into acting, right? So this is what I did this morning. So I'm going to show you a concept and I want to tie two things together here. When you don't feel like doing something. Okay. We teach a concept in our coaching program for the people we coach, whether it be in a small group setting, high level mentoring with me, we teach a very powerful, very simple concept called from A to B. A is where you are. B is where you're trying to go. That is your defining ambition. It is something you want. I'm a defensive pessimist by nature. There's strategic optimist and there's defensive pessimist. Strategic optimists show up and go, hey, it all work out. Don't worry about it. Don't stress about it. Don't prepare. They're strategic optimists, right? They may plan, but they don't stress about it. Then there's defensive pessimists, which think about all the things that could go wrong. They actually are more motivated by not losing than they are winning. I'm a defensive pessimist, which means um, when I'm doing my A to B goals, I write down all the things I don't like. I'm like, man, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. And I sure as hell don't like this. And I'm moving toward B. B is some defining ambition. It is like my ideal picture. Now, there's a reason I would move from A to B. And we call that because goals. And because goals are big reasons you do things, okay? I grew up poor. Let's just say this is, you, you say this, and because I grew up poor, I made up my mind, man, I was never going to worry about money for the, for the rest of my life. Because I grew up this way, I'm willing to pick up that phone and make a phone call, okay? Because uh, somebody didn't believe in me, I made up my mind I was going to come become somebody in the world, okay? Because... I want to help 10 million people on planet Earth. I'm willing to fight through the inconvenience to, 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 to do big things with other people, okay? Because goals. Because goals, in my opinion, are easier to connect to than start with why or find your why because I don't think just knowing your purpose will, will, will always cause you to pick up the phone. It may, but if I know what my because goals are, I'll pick up the phone when I don't feel like it. Okay, I want to do this because of this. Because goals activate my prey drive. So I want you to think about before I get into these five levels of prey drive, the prey drive is activated for one reason. I want something. I want something. Okay, if I don't want anything, Lene, then, then I don't move toward anything. See, if you study every motivational theory out there, uh, they basically all say the same thing. There's 20 motivational theories. They say we move toward things we want. And when we don't want anything, then we don't move toward anything. We're not motivated. We're demotivated. We become lazy and complacent. And I actually think there's a difference between lazy people and complacent people. 
Lazy people became lazy at some point. They settled in something and then it's cemented. So they don't know how to work hard. Complacent people know how to be successful, but allow bad habits to have them gradually settle for something they don't want until they just get sick of it. Then they got to be cause goal. Then their prey drive is activated. Boom. And then they go do something. Okay. So I want you to write this down. You got to want something. You got to want something for the prey drive to be activated. What happens if all of your needs are met? You don't want anything. When you don't want anything, you become complacent. Complacency is a gradual settling to mediocrity. Mediocrity comes from the word. I don't, I don't know what it comes from. Uh, I know, but I'm not thinking of it right now. It means halfway up the mountain. That's what it means. So when you settle, when you gradually settle, or some people cement, you only go halfway up the mountain. And life is too short, man, to get to the end of it and say, I only went halfway up the mountain. I had big dreams of opening greatness factories, but I got scared. I had big dreams of opening success schools, but it was too hard. I had big dreams of making $10 million, but, but man, I just couldn't get there. I had big dreams of whatever, writing books, traveling the world, but man, I just settled. I gradually settled, and then I cemented. Okay, now, so the prey drive must be reactivated by something every single day. Now, let's get into these five levels of prey drive. And I was thinking about what are levels of prey drive, right? What are various levels? The most of the world operates in one of the first three levels I'm going to give you tonight. And many years ago, I wrote a book called This Ain't No Practice Life. It was my first big hit as a book. And, um, and, and, and I talked about these different levels of people. Well, when I was doing this tonight in preparation, I thought, man, that's very appropriate. There's five levels of people. There's five levels of prey drive. The first level of prey drive is almost non-existent. And we're going to call this person the reactor. Life constantly happens to them not for them. They spend an enormous amount of time uh, blaming other people for their lot in life. Their boss doesn't like them. Their uh, parents did it to them. School did it to them. Their friends did it to them. Their kids did it to them. Because of all of these things, they spend almost all of their time reacting to life. There's a stimulus, then there is a response. There's a stimulus, and then there's a response. But the response is not to buckle down and you and get the prey drive activated. The response is to use the stimulus as another excuse for why they can't get ahead. I don't have the tools. I don't have the education. I don't have the money. I don't have the parents. I don't even have the house. I don't have the customers. I don't have something. So see, high prey drive people, when they have a stimulus, they, they stand up and respond to that stimulus. They come out fighting. They're like, oh yeah, it's on now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it big because that, okay? I didn't have much, now I'm going to have a bunch. They treated me like crap, now I'm going to be so good they can't ignore me. See, big time prey drive people, folks, use the stimulus that they get in the world to do something big. Small time people, the level one prey drive is man, things happen to me, man. All everything always happened to me, man. I just, I just can't get ahead. It ain't, it's, you know, I just can't get ahead, man. It's hard. It's too hard. I'm reacting. Lowest level of prey drive is you really don't have any prey drive. You, life hits you, and you just lay down, and you don't get back up, and you cement there. That is the lowest level of prey drive. Hard to help a person right here, folks. Because no matter what kind of feedback, what kind of counsel, what kind of help, they just don't want it. They don't get it. It's always your fault. You, they get mad at you for giving them the message. So level one is the reactor. Level two level two level of prey drive after the reactor, I'm calling the complainer. This is a very low level of prey drive. And this is how I know a person is a level two prey drive. I want you to think of these four categories. Small time people get together to talk about other people. 
They gossip about other people. They trash other people. They hate on other people. Number two thing small time people do, the complainer, is they talk about events. Something that happened last weekend, something that's happening in the future. They're always living in the past or living in the future. Talking about events, right? The football game, the this, the this, the this. Big time people get together and talk about ideas. How do we make it work? How do we scale this up? How do we get the right people? How do we play at a higher level? How do we, right? The highest level people get together and talk about execution of ideas. They hear it and they go do it. I love when people in my coaching program tell me, well, it really don't, like a mortgage originator says, well, it really don't work for me. I'm like, well, there's a mortgage originator in there who did 260 million. I had lunch today with one that did 160 million. So um, you tell me, does it not work? Does it not work? Or does it not work for you? Because you ain't working it. See, to me, low level prey drive people are constantly victims of their past, of their circumstances, of other people, no matter what they try, it don't work. They go to the gym, they go to the gym, say, hey man, trainer didn't, the trainer wasn't any good at that gym. Go to another gym, trainer wasn't any good at that gym. They start a job, they quit the job because they didn't like the boss, right? Boom. Complainers, man. Second low level of prey drive. You're either reactor, life happens to you, or number two, you're a complainer, man. You complain about everything. You got to watch your language here, folks. Number three level of prey drive, and now we're getting into to what I think a lot of people are, is they're thinkers or dreamers. They're someday people. Uh, someday I'm going to get started. Someday I'm going to write a book. Someday I'm going to be somebody. Someday I'm going to start a business. Someday I'm going to get off the bench. Someday I'm going to make a million dollars. Someday, see, third level of people, they think, they talk, but they never do. They never do, man. When in doubt with your prey drive, take action. When in doubt, take action. This morning, don't act your way. Don't feel your way into acting. Act your way into feeling. The reason I like structure, the reason I like a hard schedule up at 4.15, gym from five to six, family from six to seven, personal time from seven to eight, drive to the office eight to nine, meet with team at nine, uh, go through two hours of prospecting nine to 11, right? Like the reason I like a hard schedule is because the schedule forces a prey drive. It, it creates a structure for you to, to compete, to take action versus wait and think, like think, right? Think, I just think all the time about everything. So I really don't want you to get stuck in this category because it's like you have some prey drive. You have the first part of prey drive, right? You got an instinct, you see a bigger future but you lack the persistence and the intensity to do it. So the third level of prey drive is, man, I got a lot of big dreams, but something's always got to happen for me to reach those dreams. Like I know people right now that want to coach and they want to build coaching businesses. And, well, something's got to happen for them to build that business. Or I got to write the book before I get started. No, you don't, you don't need a book to start. You need to start. You need to initiate. You need to pick up the phone. You need to follow up with somebody. You need to coach somebody for free. You need to get on a stage for free. You need to do a freaking webinar. You need to start. You need to initiate. You don't need to think anymore, right? Big time prey drive people have instincts and they move, man. They move. They move. They move. They move. They don't think. Thinking is a liability. That's what my buddy Tim Grover says. Thinking about something is a liability. Okay, I'm, I'm thinking about doing it. I'm fixing to think about getting started. Whatever it is you tell yourself, folks, third level of prey drive is this, boom, okay? Now, fourth level of prey drive. This is when we get into a little bit of action, okay? Fourth level of prey drive is what I call the floater. Now, I've studied a mastery at a very deep level. I've studied the studies on mastery. Anders Erickson had a study. It's basically saying that it took 10 years, 10,000 hours of practice to master something. Uh, Cal Newport in the book Deep Work came out and said, you don't have to have 10,000 hours 
but you do have to have very concentrated periods of time in a subject with feedback and correction to be great at something. Either way, even if you don't believe you need 10,000 hours of practice in 10 years, if you say, nope, I can do it in four years. Okay, I was coaching a woman the other day, seven years, making five million a year. She did it in seven years. Okay, but she did it with feedback and instruction, concentrated and non-distracted times, following a formula and methodology. See, floaters, that's the fourth level of prey drive. You float. You have ideas, but you got too many ideas and you don't execute on any of them. Or you, or you half-ass execute the ideas. Now, I'm guilty of this one from time to time because the sheer number of ideas I come up with. So I could actually benefit from narrowing the ideas and saying, I'm only doing this. And I'm going to go deep in this niche right here and stay focused until I blow it up. And I'm constantly looking for what that niche is. What do I love doing? What am I passionate about doing? Where is there a need in the world that I can fulfill? What work am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be doing? I'm going to cover this in a, in a, in a two-day um, virtual summit I'm doing in a few weeks called Purpose to Profit. What work am I supposed to be doing? How do I monetize? So the floater actually gets started. The floater and prey drive gets started, folks. They just don't finish anything. They're quick starts. Too many ideas, not enough execution. Never drill down on a niche or niche if you're famous. Therefore, they never really dominate a space. They jump around from tree to tree to tree, from idea to idea to idea. They never master anything. They never have concentrated periods of time. No, it's hard. They never do the deep work. Therefore, they never 5X anything. They stay at the same level. They get the same level and then they get distracted. And the argument here would be stick, stick, see it through all to its logical conclusion. See it all, see it all the way through to its logical conclusion, right? And, and that's really what you're trying to do here is see something through to its logical conclusion. Okay, that is the persistence of prey drive. Now, fifth level of prey drive, because I told you there were five levels, is the doer and the achiever. That means they see it, they hear it, prey drive is activated, and they go do. They don't talk, talk about it, they don't whine about it, they don't complain about it, they don't make excuses about it. This is where the big money is made. They move very quickly from idea to action. They have put in the work the deep work over a long cycle of time to, uh, to be great. They put the deep work in to be great. And that, and, and so because of that, um, they see things through to their conclusion. Okay. And this is where we really want to live this fifth level of prey drive. Remember we got the reactor. It's everybody else's fault. We got the complainer spend a lot of time talking about other people, how it won't work. The thinker, someday people. Then we've got the floater, jump around, jump around, jump around. I think that's a song. And then fifth level of people, these are doers, man. They don't talk about doing, boom. While you're thinking, they're doing. They're movers, big movers, big players. So I want to take a second right now and I want you to type in what level you think you are. Are you a reactor? Do you feel like you complain too much? Are you a thinker? Are you a floater? Or are you a doer and achiever? Okay. Thank you, Twilla. Floater. Okay. All right. Good. Got a doer there. Thank you, Garrett. Thinker. Okay, good. Floater. Look at all these folks. Okay. Good. See, what we got to do to do something big, man, is we got to activate that drive. And the faster we activate that drive, the faster we get to this next level. Now, how do we 5X our business? I'm going to give you five ways, okay? And if you like what you're hearing and you believe this can help you, don't do it alone. This is what I specialize in. You get in a room with me and um, January 28th or virtually, Chris can post the link. 
and get in the room and do the deep work to activate that drive. Do the work. Get in the room to do the work, okay? Don't talk about doing it. Let's do it. Get in the room with me for a day, man. Let me flip the switch. And if you don't flip the switch as a result of spending a day with me, okay? I'll give you your money back for the day. So there's your, there's your uh, guarantee. If you come and spend a day with me and that prey drive is not activated in some way, if you're not thinking bigger when you leave, and you can honestly say you're not thinking bigger and you say, man, I want my money back, I'll give you money back. As long as, there's, as long as you come in and do the work, okay? Come in and go through the sessions. Come in and be open-minded, be coachable. Let me work with you to get your potential. Potential is a terrible thing to waste, man. Terrible thing to waste. All right, let's talk about how this translates into five times your business, okay? There's five things you got to do to 5X. Number one, you got to be in the right vehicle. This is very important. Some people are in vehicles that, that cannot multiply. Uh, when I was a high school basketball coach, I made $60,000 a year, worked 80 hours a week, every week. And about 10 years into it, I'm like, man, I can't, I can't multiply this vehicle. I can go to college. I can become a college coach. I can make 10 times the amount of money. If I become a major head coach, it may take me 10 years. May take me four years, depending on hey, Cal Newport, Anders Erickson, like how long is it gonna take me? But I but I but I just come to realization, man, I just can't 5x my income here. I can't go from making 60 to 300. And that's really when I started speaking. I started speaking, I was making more in an hour than I made in a month. My first contract that I signed was $144,000. My second was 125. My third was 120 and I was doubling my income. Well, I did that three or four times. Next thing you know, I had five times my income because the coaching, although labor intensive, I was coaching for bigger money. And that, that taught me a valuable lesson, man. I got talent just like you do, but I need to, to use that talent over here in this arena. This is the right vehicle. I can't get there in this vehicle. Okay, now I'm doing uh, coaching programs and one day summits. And if, and, and if the skill level is there and the connection to the audience is good and the value is greater than the cost of the goods or services, then now in a day, we can generate a couple hundred thousand dollars to maybe a million dollars. So I want you to think about that. So the right vehicle is can I get to my financial goals in this vehicle? Can, can, can I even, is it even possible to 5X this? Is it even possible? When I was a high school basketball coach, not in that vehicle, couldn't 5X it. So that's question number one. Number two, am I solving a big enough problem to 5X my income? Money changes hands when problems are solved. So I wake up in the morning and I ask myself some simple questions. What's the biggest, juiciest, most lucrative problem I could solve with my skill set? Is it solving a problem for 10 million people at a dollar a person? Is it solving a problem? that helps a company go from 650 million to a billion and I get a piece of it? Is it owning a percentage of a company and adding my skill set to solve that company's problem to help them multiply? Is it making a connection to someone? You know, I, I have an investment in a, uh, a, a, a cyber security company and uh, I think we got a good product. I think it can be big. And I introduced him to one of my clients, the number one cybersecurity person in the world. So, so maybe we got the right product. Maybe we got the right problem. Maybe we got the wrong people. Maybe we need a connection that can solve a big problem that would 5X or 10X an investment. Number three, do I have the right skills to 5X my income? See, I'm a big, big believer here, guys that um, 
I'm a big, big believer that money doesn't buy you freedom. Skills buys you freedom. The stronger your skill level, the more money you're going to make. So some of you got to skill up, man. Right now, your income is in proportion to your skill level. Skill is opening a conversation, closing a conversation, overcoming an objection, following up and bringing a person to a buying decision, getting a person excited about something, visioneering something and executing. These are skills. As uh, my buddy, who is it in Texas, says you got to become a skillionaire before you become a millionaire. Okay. Hoss Pratt, you got to become a skillionaire before you become a millionaire. Okay. Number four, do you have the right relationships to 5X the business? Okay. This is where I, you hear me talk a lot about blue marlins. Um, blue marlins are big fish, highly connected, can introduce you to new people. And uh, you don't need more money. You need more people. The people have the money. You have to get in front of people and solve a problem for them, for them to give you that money. So to 5X a business, and this is making me think, I hope it's making you think, you got to step back and ask, do I have the right relationships? Because the key to the many is to the one. If you went over the one right person, I remember many years ago when I signed a four or $500,000 contract because of a relationship I had with the CEO of the company. And because I had a great relationship with that person, brought a very specific skill set, tried to solve a very big problem. Uh, it was, a, I think, a $450,000 contract over four years. Now, there's some people that are making $4.5 million per contract or $40 million to solve the right problem through the right relationship. Some of you are still fishing in the wrong ponds. You fishing for blue gills versus blue marlins, man. Maybe you got the right vehicle. Maybe you got the right problem. Maybe you even got the right skill. What you don't have is the right relationships. Like me connecting the number one cybersecurity person to my cybersecurity company. Boom. That one thing could, could open a door. Too many people don't spend enough time building this relationship. Okay. And number five. You got the right usage in multiplication to 5X the business. Let me tell you what I mean by that. I got into the insurance uh, game this past year because I've been coaching insurance people for years. Some of the best insurance people in the world. I go speak at an insurance conference. The five best people will come up and say, I want to work with you in some way. And uh, I said, man, why don't we build something? Why don't we build something to scale? Why don't we take our talent, our skill, why don't we solve a problem in the insurance space, growing the whole person, activating the prey driving agents, giving them a vehicle they can make more money. Why don't we build the right relationships on collaboration versus, co 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 versus, uh, versus uh, competition? And why don't we just build something incredible? That's the right usage of the skill to multiply, William. What is the right usage? See, now I'm using my talent of activating prey driving people, connection to people, to bring the best insurance people in the world together so that we can build out this incredible agency that already has a couple thousand agents in it. And, and I think could get to 10,000 agents quickly, within a year, within two years. That is the right usage of the prey drive in a multiplier mindset. Then I'm asking myself, how do we do it in mortgage? How do we do it in real estate? How do we do it in technology? How do we do it with kid, in the kids' schools? How do we do it in greatness factories? See, now we're getting into vehicle, problem, skill set, relationships, and usage and multipliers. And when we get into these multipliers, man, then it starts getting real exciting, folks, because now we're starting to play and, and, the, and the sheer thought of doing it this big starts to just get the engine going, get that engine going, activate that prey drive. You know, when I think about 
my greatness factory in Nashville that I'm building. I pull out the renderings and I look at those renderings. I had that vision in 2017. It's taken me five or six years to manifest the vision, to have a physical space, have the renderings drawn. The plans were right there at the purchase agreement step to get it and start building this thing. And I firmly believe when we build one and you see it, you're going to want one in your city. Now, let me tell you what that does. It activates my prey drive. Moving from A to B activates my prey drive. Right talent, right skill, right relationships, right usage, right multipliers. This is how you activate and push something. But if, but if you're level one, level two, level three, level four, folks, simply not enough prey drive to go do it at a really big level. And you owe it to yourself to activate and call up on this drive when you need it every single day. Now, I hope tonight has been good for you. Um, I want to just come to you for 30 or 40 minutes. Looks like we're at 42 minutes tonight. I'm actually flying to Miami, Florida tomorrow to, uh, to go to a conference myself to grow and get better. But, um, man, I really want to encourage you. Invest in yourself. When I was 25 years old, I borrowed $2,500 from my mother to go to uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That one decision changed my life. It helped me make millions of dollars. It helped me find what made me unique, package what made me unique, sell what makes me unique. Man, it really activated my prey drive. So, Yasmin, I see you on here. Thank you. I think I called you today to get you down to Florida with me. Uh, I know Chris Oden was on here who can help you. But I want to encourage you, whether you come January 28th to pray drive, if you, if you know you've got another gear and you can't find that gear, you spend one day with me the 28th of January on Flip the Switch, and I will find that gear. And like I said, if you come and it don't work and you don't think your pray drive is active after spending a day with me, number one, pray drive is probably dead and deactivated. But hey, if it don't work and you can show me that you tried, I give you money back, folks. So there's no, absolutely no risk for you whatsoever. Now, if you're on here and you want to do something else with me, just reach out to Chris at coachbird.com. He'll listen to you, find the right product and service for you. Folks, I can't help you to commit to something. Can't help you to commit to something. But once you commit, man, I, ain't, I am not in the business of letting people fail. I am in the business, in the business of activating that prey drive. So, Thank you guys tonight. Chris at coachbert.com. Chris at coachbert.com. Flip the switch. January 28th. I got other events going on. Purpose to profit. Folks, find something and get in there with me. And let me coach you and let's activate something inside of you. Let's become skillionaires so we can become them millionaires. Okay. You guys have a great night. God bless you.